Hi boys and girls, it's time for our interactive read aloud. We are starting a new text set this week. Um, all of these books are by the same author illustrator, Douglas Florian, and they are a really neat mix of um, sort of nonfiction information, but in poetry form for the one for today. I can't wait for you to take a look. This one is called Insectalopedia. So that makes me think about encyclopedia, which I know has a lot of information in it. And obviously with the insect, insect part, it's going to be about bugs. And yet I don't see real photographs. I see drawings or illustrations. It says Poems and Paintings by Douglas Florian. So this is a really neat mix of genre. It's definitely a hybrid. So let's go through and pick some of our favorites and read them. Um, this is a table of contents where it says all of the poems that are in here. And you can see that each one of them is about a different kind of insect. So I'm not gonna read all of them to you today. That would probably take a long time, but we'll pick a few that we think are cool. So looking at this, I see caterpillar, dragonfly, daddy long legs, I know that's a spider, army ants, inchworm, ooh, that sounds kind of cool. The praying mantis, the black widow spider, ooh. The io moth, I think, the whirligig beetles, the weevils, the walking stick, the hornet, the tree hoppers, the mosquitoes, the monarch butterfly, the giant water bug, the termites, the crickets, the locusts, the ticks, and the mayfly. So, wow, lots to choose from. Well, the first one that sort of stuck with me that I thought might be kind of interesting is this inchworm one. So, let's see if we can find that. Ooh, are you noticing something about the way that Douglas Florian wrote this poem? Yeah, look over here in the illustration. Here is this painting of an inchworm. Kind of cool how it also includes all these road signs, maybe to tell us that we can kind of find them anywhere. And then he wrote the poem in the shape of an inchworm. Look at this. I inch, I arch, I march along. I'm just a pinch, a more inch long. I stroll and stick on sticks in thickness and never pick up Speeding tickets. Ah, that must be why the road signs are here, because it only inches along. It's never going too fast. Really interesting how he connected the text and the illustration here with the shape of the poem. And he didn't do that on all of them. This one was kind of special that way. So let's go back to that table of contents and see another one that sounds kind of good to us. How about the walking stick? What even is a walking stick? I don't even know. Let's look. See if we can find, oh, look, he did it here too. He did like a round thing, whirly gig, because that sounds kind of round, but you can see in a lot of other ones he didn't. So the walking stick. The walking stick is thin, not thick, and has a disappearing trick. By looking like a twig or stalk, it lives another day to walk. So it is completely camouflaged, look at that, in the sticks. And that is how it survives or, um, you know, goes unnoticed by, I guess, predators who like to eat walking sticks, of which I am not one. So let's look at two more. Um, let's see. How about, ooh, you know what? I kind of wondered about that black spider one. Let's go back to that. Or the black widow. I'm sorry. I said that wrong. Here we go. Where's that one? Ooh, praying mantis looks cool. Here we go. I am a widow, I always wear black, from my eight dainty legs to my shiny round back. Do not disturb me, my fangs carry venom. I am a widow, I don't wear blue denim. I love the way he is using some rhyming words, and in this one is really kind of focused on what it looks like, whereas like in the inchworm one, it was more about what it does. So he kind of gets to take a different, um, Oh, perspective on each one of his insects as he thinks about them and focuses his poem in on that. Um, and look, little jeans are all hanging here in shirts like a um, like a drying rack, and they're all black. No blue jeans for the black widow spider. All right, last one. Let's see. How about the giant water bug? Just the word giant in there really captures my attention. Where is that? Let's keep going. I think it's a couple more down from here. Oh, the giant water bug. Oh, look, he's reading a dad card. Hmm, I'm interested about that. 
And look, these look maybe like eggs. It's interesting how he teaches us about the insect, even in his illustrations, his paintings. The giant water bug. The giant water bug can lug his eggs upon his back. He gives them extra care up there and guards them from attack. The mother glues them to the dad and on his back they stay. But does he ever get a card or gift for Father's Day? Oh, that's cute. So he focused in on just this whole part about giant water bugs um, where the dad actually has the eggs sticking to his back and that's who takes care of the eggs until they hatch. Um, so again, just focusing in on like a really cool fact or um, maybe how they look or maybe how they move and turning that into a poem was a really neat way for Douglas Florian to teach us about insects. So I hope sometime um, as a writer, you will take a risk and try a hybrid genre like this one where you can teach and be poetic and, to, and show even more information in your illustrations and kind of put all that together. That's really cool. So I hope you enjoyed our book and you can look forward to other books this week by Douglas Florian um, using many hybrid genres um, to teach us in different ways. Have a great and fabulous day.